everyone, this is Gail. Welcome to my channel tonight. We're going to talk about how to be healthy when I'm on the road. Uh, my tips and techniques for doing that. This came out of a conversation I had a couple of days ago. So I thought it'd be a great topic to talk about right here because summer travel season's coming up and a lot of people are going to be on the road. So hopefully some of the ways that I manage my health and how I stay healthy in the van on a road trip will help you as well. And let's say we've already got Lori Jean Finley in. So, hi, Lori Jean. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are doing actually great. Now, Lori herself is a seasoned traveler. So, if you've not checked out her channel, you need to go do that. All right. Um, I'm not going to be able to see everybody, I don't think, as of where the phone is for me. And Lori is living positively after 60. And she says, she's doing much better. She said, I was talking to somebody earlier this week, and she was like, she didn't understand um, how I could be or would even want to be on the road, given that I have a bunch of health challenges. And I was like, you know, <laughs> Just because you have a health challenge or two, why would you want to stay home? You know, you've got a life to live out there. So why wouldn't you want to go and, and live your life and have fun instead of just staying at home and kind of waiting for the next shoe to drop? You know, but of course, you know, that kind of mindset is what our channel's about because the whole idea behind hashtag be bodacious or at be bodacious is to not let life get in the way of living, to go out there and have fun and do things so you don't have to get stay stuck at home um, no matter what your situation is. And for me, the easiest way to do that has been oh, in my van, as y'all know, I love my van, so. Tanya's in. Hi, Tanya. Yay. Very good. Glad to see you. Glad to see you both. Y'all are awesome. That actually brings me to one of the things uh, about being on the road when we're talking about self-care is mental health and staying connected. And I'm not, Tanya, please, I'm not saying that you're having mental health issues. It's just the topic I've written down. And one of the things that's kind of hard for people sometimes um, when you're on the road is to stay connected um, with family and friends and, and the world around you. You know, being on the road is kind of cool because you get to meet people from like everywhere and from all walks of life. And you get to interact with people that you wouldn't normally get to interact with. But it's for a few minutes here or a few minutes there. And it's really, really cool. But it's not like staying connected with friends and keeping friends updated. It's totally different. And let's see. Um... Oh, no, I, Tanya, I did not know that Anne passed. Yes, I have been. She was really a good person. Um, mobility issues and what is what really worries with worries me with travel and bathroom issues. Um, Lori Jean says me too. So let me see. Mobility issues and what is what. Okay, we're, we'll talk about that. I'm making a note, so if I get sidetracked during the live stream, I can come back to it. And you guys can keep me honest on this, okay? So. All right. So let's go back to um, the mental health aspect first. Um, and, and that is, you know, if you need professional mental health, this isn't what this live stream is about. So go get you some professional mental health. Um, 
and you may that may be something that you need when you're on the road and i know there's a lot of telehealth opportunities for that but that's not what i'm talking about um when i say mental health on the road it's more how to keep a positive attitude and how to con how to stay connected with friends because we have phone fax text email facebook x formerly twitter and all those ways that we can keep up with with people and what's going on the problem with some of those things i think other than your phone in your text messaging is that you it's really hard to have like a deep conversation with somebody uh, when you're going through text messaging just because it's it's not like you know you're you're catching you're spending time with a girlfriend out and having lunch and you're spilling the tea about everything that's going on in life you can't really do that as well over text and email but maintaining that connection is really really big when you're on the road and you spend a lot of time when you're by yourself that's part of why you go on the road sometimes and being alone isn't the same thing as being lonely and i want you all to hear that because you can be lonely in a crowded room um, and you can just be alone So what you want is that that balance so that you can be comfortable with yourself and be comfortable being who you are when you're alone. And then part of that, whoops, part of that is maintaining those connections uh, with people who aren't on the road. So friends, people who are at home, you know, however that looks like. Um, so if you need to schedule a zoom call or a facebook call when you're on the road just to keep up with people from home but like your your best friend or your family member then do that you know do what you can to stay connected because you're on the road and you're doing solo female travel or or just travel in general or solo male travel even um but you still want to have those connections it's like you want to know that somebody's there even though they may without them necessarily being in your face so that's one thing um, about mental health that's really helpful for me um endless journaling i keep the best journals when i'm on the road <laughs> when i have time to sit down and think now it's a little different like if i'm going to alaska and i'm running late and i'm having to make up for lost time I don't tend to journal, but if I am out on a road trip and I'm doing general solo female travel, then yeah, I get my journal out. Um, there's actually the thumbnail for tonight's live stream has a picture of me doing some journaling. And let's see here. I'm going back up. Let's see bathroom issues i don't like asking strangers for help i don't like having accidents okay we will we will talk about that mobility is a big fear okay um and yes they do i'm letting positively saying they make undergarments yes tanya said i knew i finally got a normal bowel and bladder routine and i don't like the idea of wearing those again makes sense too hey thomas moore is in thomas moore P and L Railway. Here he is. It would be just for reassurance. Absolutely. Because it's so exciting, all the things that you're seeing. Great to hear, Gail. Aw, you're so sweet. Thank you. But you're going to be seeing some awesome things too. So, yay. Um, have you ever had trouble with anxiety attacks while traveling? If so, how did you manage it um yeah i have and i think too it's important for people to know that anxiety attacks look differently between different people um for some it's the you know gasping being short of breath getting the paper bag out 
that old routine of blowing in and out of the paper bag. Um, so I, for me, when I do a panic attack, uh, I tend to get like really edgy. And I just, I, I get really edgy. I get feeling insecure and just, I have to change my environment when that happens. So that's one thing that I like about being on the road in my van is because if I don't like where I am, I can change that really, really easily. Um, the other thing that I found out is when I have an anxiety attack, it may not be related to anything that's going on at that moment, but could be something that happened like yesterday and then you know you had like maybe this big thing happened and then the anxiety just kind of built up so part of the way i deal with it um, is to remind myself that i'm in a safe space and that if i don't feel safe i just start the engine and leave um and i that gives me a lot of comfort a whole lot let me see i still want to get to moving here where i can see you all better um, so that gives me a lot of comfort. The other thing is um, I have Pepsi. I've got my service dog. So I will stand there and pet him and stroke him, uh, calm down. I will do some deep breathing. Uh, those are all some of the strategies. You know, the grounding with petting him helps. If he is not with me, um, what I will do, which is very rare, um, but what I'll do is like I'll hold a pen and I'll just rub my finger against that just to kind of remind me where I am to help ground me um, and just kind of get through it the best I can. You know, I also like listening to music. That really helps a lot. And there are some awesome, awesome, awesome YouTube channels that are just nothing but music, you know. So I like that. Um, so, yeah, I definitely have had trouble with anxiety attacks, and that's, that's how, I get, how I get through it. Um, I'll take, whoops, I'll take a sip of water um, and just slowly sip on that and then just remind myself, hey, I'm okay. And, and then, like, after it's over, I'll go back and I'll think, okay, what, what may have led up into this, you know? Um, Certainly, a couple of times I've had safety issues when I've been traveling. I just can't get this thing done right. Okay, let's try that. Um, and like, there's nothing really, I mean, you're going to have safety issues potentially anywhere. <laughs> I don't think it's specific to me being traveling. But, you know, part of it is looking and saying, okay, I was really calm when this thing happened, like last night. Um, so here we are, we're less than 24 hours later and I'm reacting and it's a matter of, you know, the deep breathing, taking sips of water, petting the dog, rubbing my pen, uh, and then going, okay, I am not there anymore. You know, it's one of the things that I really like is, don't judge me by my past. I don't live there anymore. And so, like, when I have a problem, if it relates to something that's happened in the 24 hours, then I can stop and say, hey, that's in the past. I don't live anymore. Don't live there anymore. I've moved on. Now I've got to get my head back in the game. And that really helps. So how do you, how do you guys handle that? Do you all do the panic attacks, too? Um, I think the wheelchair will give me comfort and make me feel safer so that I can have more fun. It sounds really cool. It, it sounds really, really cool. Uh, she also says she really misses having Archer with me all the time. It's been a very hard adjustment. Yeah, that would be awful. Um, to, 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 I got to tell you, when I first lost Tomlin, I really thought, okay, I had the grieving process, but I really thought I was going to be more okay not having the service dog than what I actually was. Because what happened was 
I didn't realize how much I needed him. So just from that, like to your experience, I can understand what you're going through with Archer. It's not the same because we're different people, but I understand that. So I understand the anxiety and the fear from that. Um, I bet Tanya, I worry about Gail with Pipsy's limitation. We're just, you know, it's like, I just add it to the list. You know, we just, we work with his limitations. We work with mine. It's just how you have to roll. The agency is trying to get me another dog. They're working on it until then. I have him and he's, he's a huge blessing. I mean, I am firmly convinced that he saved my life one night. If he, or one evening, and if he didn't save my life, he at least saved me from being really badly hurt. Um, that's because we were at a national park and we were at their little theater inside. And I was at the top row, which in retrospect may have been stupid, but it's the row that they have it designed so that you walk in on and it goes down from there. So I came in and then as I did, my foot kind of went over. I don't know if I hit a step wrong or quite what happened because there was like there was a little ledge there and I didn't see it. So, of course, me being me. I trip over it because that's what I do. And had it not been for him, I would have tumbled. I definitely would have tumbled. And my husband was like grabbing me and stuff. And I'm like, no, Pipsy's got me. Pipsy's got me. You know, like, don't grab me. He's got me. So he he's a huge help. So, yeah, but I just have to watch it now. So let's see. Um you know, railway. I saw a 200 car CSX train with a DPU. Oh, that's cool. Very nice. Very nice. Um, okay. Let me see here. Oh, uh, Lori's saying that she's more loud with the mouth when she has hers. Okay. And Tanya says, I mean, I understand that Pipsy is taking a retirement too and maybe some people say i retired or too early that i should have used him when he wasn't having foot problems but i decided no archer still does stuff like that around the house you can still very much serve. yeah there are service dogs that only help somebody when they're home and not when they're out i was talking to somebody about that about a week ago she said she didn't feel take, comfortable taking her service dog out anymore because the service dog's getting old, but she still needed the seizure alerts and stuff that he was doing. So when she was out, she just made sure to always be out with a friend and or family member. And when she was home, she had the dog. And I kind of got the feeling she lived by herself. I don't know. She just, she came up to me and she was like, hey, can I talk to you about your dog? And I'm like, sure. Yeah, so that's how that happened. Um, whoo. Thomas says he has a Florida East Coast Railroad concrete screw pike. That's cool. Nice. And Tanya's saying somebody else suggested I get a replacement dog, but a price, and I don't want Archer to see another dog doing his job. That makes sense. Like one of the things that's made it easier about Pipsy is, is him being able to go out to my daughter. If he wasn't going out to my daughter, I don't really know quite what I would do because of the same thing. You know, I don't wanna suddenly be taking another dog out places and leaving him at home because He'd been so faithful with me the whole time. Um, it's it's gut wrenching either way you go. But for me, knowing he's going to a place that he already knows people, he already loves them, they already love him. He's got playmates, you know. He's got playmates. He's got water to play in. He's got chickens to chase, and 
goats to play with and all this stuff. So I, he's going to be fine. I have to, you know, kind of get beyond my anxiety, but he's going to be fine. But yeah, knowing he's got that place makes it a lot easier to look at retirement for him. Okay, and Thomas Moore is saying it's zinc plated stainless steel. Good deal. Good deal. So <laughs> I hope that helps with like the anxiety. The other thing is to look at um, what might make me anxious when I'm on the road and try to mitigate that. Like one of the things that really plays into my anxiety level is not getting sleep. I will tell you. And I don't need a lot of sleep. My <laughs> My family is like, they are convinced that I need more sleep, less sleep than anybody on the planet. And oh my gosh, I remember one time getting so frustrated with Stellar Piper because we were out and she, she's going to kill me for telling this. But anyway, she was really groggy and really super tired. And we'd spent the night in the van and I'm like, get up, you're going to be late. I, like, I don't even remember what we were doing. And she's like, no, we can't be late. I'm like, exactly. So get up. Um, and she was moving so slow. And I was like, look, you got a good four hours, five hours of sleep here, girl. Let's get on with it. And she's like, that's the problem. I only got four or five hours of sleep. And I'm like, come on, you know, like get, let's get it going. But um, yeah, I was fine. She was not. That's just how I've always rolled. But when I get less than that, or when I've hit the wall and I don't get sleep, then I, my anxiety goes up. So part of it, I know I have to get a good five hours of sleep a night or I'm going to be a little anxious. So then my question is, for me, what is the best way to do that when I'm on the road? Especially going to Alaska because once you get to a certain point up north, you kind of lose darkness because in the summer you're more in the sun. And so I got this. Oh my gosh, what I do with it? I just I had it here. There we go. I have this wonderful eye mask. I forgot to tell you all about it. Okay. So to help me get some sleep and to help me stay asleep, oh, I have this awesome, incredible amazing eye mask and i think i spent like 30 bucks for it so it's a little pricey but it's super super thick and it covers all of my face but guess what else though it's got speakers inside here on the side i'm gonna look and see if i can show you right there it's got speakers there are speakers built in so i can there's my controls I can adjust it. <gasps> Tanya, thank you for the sticker. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That helps so much. Thank you. Um, and, and living positively. Lori says she sleeps better with her eye mask and she'll bring hers too. So, yeah. And when, oh my gosh, they make so many like different eye masks now. One of the ones that I had that I used to love until my dog ate the cord right after I got him was my heated eye mask. I loved that. But when I went to get the next mask, I saw this and I was like, oh, I have to have it. So I can stream from my phone, listen in my ear mask. I can stream music, a podcast, War and Peace. You know, it just anything I want to and if I have a call come in then I will I will know because that comes through on the speakers too yeah you know, I just don't answer it I just let it go to voicemail um but yeah and it's USB rechargeable there you go right there but it's so comfortable it's like oh my gosh I love this thing it's comfortable it blocks light so this is like one awesome way that I can get enough sleep when I'm on the road. It really helps. And it also, even without the speakers on, it dulls the noise, uh, which is really good. So even if I don't have it plugged in, then just having it muffling the sound is, is really helpful. 
but you don't have to spend 30 bucks on an eye mask they have got cheap ones at the dollar tree and i thought i had thought i had one what did i just do with that i know i just had it and no well, i guess that's a lie i guess i don't have it anyway they sell masks at the dollar tree and they're not too nice too um they're just they're not as thick and they don't have speakers but you're not paying a freaking fortune for them either so they're great um let's see you'll have to get one it's awesome um i can i can link it and i'll put a comment and i'll link it in the comment so you can go straight to that um but yeah but whatever mask you get if you get one make sure it's thick enough to block the light don't get a really thin one um some of the dollar tree masks will block a light better than others but i kind of feel like if it's not blocking a lot of light i've spent a buck and a quarter on it so i can wear two in layer you know so that's just me um, another thing that i think is important when you're on the road is to have some kind of craft that you like to do or something that you like to do and we did a whole live stream once on crafts that you can do on the road in a van and take with you loom knitting you know we talked about that and how quick and easy it was to make things on the loom like this hat so i've already started working on next christmas for gifts for the shelters and stuff um, and the other thing is you know crochet and this is still a work in progress so you'll see some of my strings hanging down so don't pay attention to those but yeah um just having being able to crochet something and just even if you only do it for five minutes then it's still it's helpful for lowering the anxiety and just kind of helping you think a little bit when you're on the road so you have trouble counting your stitches you lose count then get something that you don't have to count if you're interested in crochet there are crochet patterns that you just go to the right length and you don't have to count you just keep going to the end of the row turning around and coming back yeah um, granny squares you don't really have to count for granny squares you can as as much you can put a you know i use a paper club not a paper clip but a clothespin and then just keep going around there's 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 a lot of things that you can do um do you find it easier gail to bring your own food or eat out when i'm in the van i tend to bring my own food because one of the things that i have found to be extremely important when i am traveling is staying on my schedule so whatever schedule i have at home i try to keep that on the road if i'm used to taking my thyroid medication at eight in the morning i want to take it at eight in the morning eastern time which can be very different you know than other time zones so i use my good old-fashioned analog watch people laugh at me i've gotten had people make comments and give me a hard time about having an analog watch but this thing is on my time at home. That's not going to change if it's analog. Whereas if I'm traveling, like how do I know my phone is updating accurately? Because it doesn't always. It depends on where the tower is, whether or not you hit the tower, it can update early, later, and so forth. And that can really mess you up when you're traveling and you're trying to stay on schedule. Um, the other thing is when you're on the East Coast and you are three hours earlier than where you are, that's the difference if you're going to a restaurant in being able to get lunch versus breakfast um, because of the cutoff time being like 1030. Well, if it's 1030 East Coast time and that's what your body's used to, then that's 7 30 in the morning when you're on the road 
So the restaurants, you may be getting ready and looking at where to stop for lunch and the restaurants are just now setting up for breakfast. So it's a lot easier uh, for me to just bring it. And that's why I've done so many things on the mini griddle. <laughs> yeah, you, I know y'all have seen those videos about doing, you know, different stuff on the mini griddle. And, and that's why. It's just easier. So, uh, let's see. What else? Oh, food, that's a big thought in my mind. Solo traveling at four-star restaurants. Yikes, any suggestions? Uh, don't go to a four-star restaurant. Go to one that's a little more affordable, a little more reasonable. Um, now, I will say, too, one of the things that I like to do if I do go to, like, a Cracker Barrel um, is to get a meal that I can divide into, like, a couple of meals. So, for example, if I'm going to go for breakfast, we'll say, then... Um, no, let's not say breakfast. Let's say I'm going to go and I'm going to get a ham dinner, for example. Um, then I will take half of that home because the pieces are really big. So I'll take half of that home to the, well, home to the van in a to-go container with, if I get a three vegetable dinner, then I'll take one of the vegetables, I'll take the ham, and I'll ask them for a couple more biscuits. So boom, I've got enough food for two meals right there. Now, oftentimes, they'll give me more than just a couple of biscuits. So I can pair that with gravy mix that I have in the van. If I've got my hot water kettle, which I usually always do, uh, I can pair that with sausage that I may already have in the refrigerator. You know, there's just a ton of things. Now, I don't do Cracker Barrel a whole lot when I'm on the road. Um, just because I don't necessarily always like going into a restaurant, but I do some, and when I do, I'll get two pieces. Same thing if I go to the Olive Garden. I'll get a dinner, and I'll split it up. If they bring an item that's got like two chicken breasts, then one of those and half that plate is going to go home with me later to be warmed up in the van. So, yeah. Um, she says, yes, I was thinking of doubling up on one meal with the mini fridge in the room. I don't know the area to travel to other restaurants. Your front desk, if you're in a hotel, they'll help you. Um, they can give you all kinds of suggestions. And, you know, just kind of casually ask them, you know, tell them like what price range you're looking at. And ask them if they have a shuttle because a lot of hotels, if they've got an airport shuttle, it's not just for the airport. It'll take you to restaurants and sometimes even little shops that are around within a certain radius of the hotel. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, but I spent all too many years working in the hotel industry, you know, and, and doing that. So check um, if your hotel where you're staying has a shuttle that may be an option always the recommendations they can they can suggest that you just have to be really clear and tell them what you want um, if you want american food don't say i want to go to a restaurant that also serves burgers you know i want to go to a restaurant that serves grilled chicken hamburgers and pork chops you know just be very specific so they don't accidentally steer you the wrong way um embarrassing gail but do you know of a more affordable eating venue okay so there's all kinds of options out there it kind of depends on what you want and where you are so if you are looking for something in, say, the 5 to $10 range, uh, look for your delis, look for your sub shops, get water. Don't pay $3 to get something to drink. That's just a pet peeve of mine. Um, so get water. If you don't like water, take your flavoring packets with you. If you don't want to take a flavoring packet with you, Ask for a cup of hot water and bring your own tea bag. Sometimes they'll do that and let you do that at a restaurant. 
Um, so look at look at delis for like salads, subs, and there are some times too when you can take that sub and split it in half. And let's say you're paying eight dollars for a full sub and you don't need it all, whack that thing in half and have some for dinner and some the next day or however you want to do it. So let's see. And many restaurants in the hotel but a more expensive than I want. See, that's the thing about hotel restaurants and also hotels that, I'm sorry, also restaurants that are on the grounds of the hotel. So you may have a really nice steakhouse, for example, that's in the parking lot at the hotel and they pay more, so they cost more. So if you can go away from the hotel, generally you're much better off. And with Uber, DoorDash, and stuff, you're better, but then you have those delivery fees. So make sure that whatever you order can be divided to make those delivery fees worth it. Another thing you can do is if you have AARP, some of the restaurants give AARP discounts. My husband has gotten to where he likes going to the Outback for most of his meetings with people for lunch because he can go and get water he can get a lunch um, at the outback and he can say 15 percent so he gets a better meal for about the same price the other thing you can do if you go to do you have a sam's or a costco membership um, if you don't check that out uh, you can be able to get like a trial membership for like a week or two weeks whatever it is and go in there and scope it out. Look at their gift cards because a lot of times they'll have discounted gift cards. Now, don't think always that, like, you may have traditionally an expensive place, but you might be able to stack the discounts and make it much more affordable. For example, Hard Rock, Hard Rock Cafe. I like Hard Rock, but I'm not going there every day of the week because it is too dang expensive. But what we found was Sam's Club had the Hard Rock gift card. You're buying a $100 gift card for 80 bucks. And we were going to Pigeon Forge with a group. So I knew they wanted to do Hard Rock. It's like I'd already heard from the kids about Hard Rock. When you're going with teens, you kind of have to go where they want to. So we found this $80 gift card at Hard Rock. So Boom, or it's $100, but you're paying 80. So boom, we get to Hard Rock, they take AAA. They give you a 10% AAA discount. So we went to Hard Rock, we, we had water, because like I said, I don't want to pay three bucks for a drink unless I have to. And we had the gift card and we got the AAA. So we wound up making, I kid you not, three trips to the Hard Rock off that one gift card just because of those the discounts in what we ordered. So I love their barbecue plate, which also happens to be one of the less expensive things there. Um, I just don't usually eat it with the bun, but you know, well, that being a really good deal. So look and see what they've got. Um, Costco, Sam's, I think there's BJ's wholesale. They probably do that too. Um, AAA has gift cards and you don't, you don't get a percentage off if you get a gift card at AAA. But what they do is you have cash points and you can apply that to your next AAA membership or cash them in. So it's not a lot, but like back at Christmas, I got some $10 Starbucks cards at 5% at off, which 5% is not a lot. But I was, I got them anyway because I was needing Christmas gifts and now I have a few more bucks um, in AAA dollars, which is going to save me later. So that's what that is. So you, you, you look at the total picture of something. Um, Olive Garden may be expensive initially up front, but you can share a meal at Olive Garden. And what they do is they give you the plate charge, like you're buying the salad and the breadsticks, and then give you you can share the entree with a friend and then you and your friend can split the price of that entree 
or if you're going to go in and you know you're going to have stuff um, that you want to take home later then split that entree like go for the lunch get the lunch portion split that and ask them if you can have some salad in a to-go box without dressing on it and they will do that um, i've had them do it anyway some i mean it's all depending on like who you get sometimes but they said yes so that's the way i've definitely stretched it and let's see let's see 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 i already have a cart filled at check out under uber eats in mexico to deliver to the hotel zone if i have the card if i have the courage hard rock is down the road okay when you're traveling if you've got a gift card make sure that the u.s gift card is good at a place out of the country because like i couldn't use my starbucks card in canada that i got in the u.s uh what makes that so special i've heard hard rock cafe but why is it so great it's the atmosphere everything in there is from a hard rock perspective so they've got hard rock music going on hard rock videos They've got posters of hard rock bands and hard rock musicians, and that's just built into the decor. And so the food's good. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like, it's, it's, it, I don't think it's spectacular, but the food's good. Um, so it's the atmosphere, really. That's what it is. And kids always want to go there. Okay. So here I just said the food's good, not great. And, Here's Lori Jean saying the food is great. <laughs> so there you go. Um, plus, my generation grew up on rock and roll, and they have the mem memorabilia there and all that. So cool. Yes, it is. Uh, she has trouble with certain foods, and I worry about finding things that I can eat when I travel because of my limited diet. Any advice? Okay. You know what? You know the kinds of places that you can eat at home? Look for places like that when you're on the road. Um, if you know that you can eat at barbecue restaurants, for example, uh, look for places that are similar to that barbecue restaurant when you're on the road. And as I say this, I realize that barbecue is probably the worst analogy to make because there are so many different types of barbecue. Uh, mustard, vinegar, um, the sauce, just so. But you see what I'm, what I'm saying? Uh, the other thing that I would suggest is two other things. If you're going to go to a restaurant, try a restaurant that's got a buffet because there are a lot of things that you can choose from. And when you go into a restaurant, you can ask them if you can walk over and look at the buffet uh, before you order. And that'll tell you, you know, like, is there something up there that you can eat or not? Uh, so you can ask for that uh, before you order. Also. A huge thing is to check out the restaurant menus before you go. And you can do that online. Pull them up on your phone. And that will tell you so much about the restaurant. You'll get the idea of the price. You'll get the idea from the pictures of what the food looks like. You can look at reviews. You can see the menu. And you can tell, you know, if it's going to be worth going to or not. Because when you're traveling and you're at a new area, you're kind of at the mercy of word of mouth suggestions familiarity and your apps so you can look things like that up so that's what i would do and i would also make sure that i have some kind of snack that i can eat that would be a healthy snack that you can have on the road so whether whatever that looks like for you whether it's cheese and crackers and grapes or a um who knows you know, so i would make sure that i had something like that that I could have in a pinch. Um, let's see, Lori says, me too, Tanya. That's where the mini fridge and food order right away helps. Yes. The other thing you can do when you're on the road, if you're gonna be in one place for a few days, is you can actually order from like Instacart or shipped and have some groceries delivered to you. Um, if you have a mobility issue and can't get out, you're going to pay a few more dollars for the tip and for, or for the Instacart fee, for example. 
but it is it can be really worth it it is a blessing to know that you can order from someplace and have it magically arrive that saved my butt when i was in oklahoma and i had problems with the van and it was at the shop and i'd ubered to the hotel and i got there and i realized that i had my food and his food back in the van but i was able to get online i ordered from shipped they brought it to me boom end of worry let's see and the other thing is if you go this is becoming about saving money a little bit which is cool but if you go to the sam's club or wherever <coughs> they may have discounted gift cards for like uber doordash and stuff so you may want to buy one of those if it's something you're certain you're going to use because you don't want to throw away money but that might be a time when you might want to also look and see if they have instacart or shipped or something like that walmart delivers a lot of places too so check that um let's see Lori is also saying she's nervous about leaving the country on her own but the excitement takes over more i can't wait I can't wait to hear about this. So I and, I, and I'm going to trust you now. You better do like a whole ton of videos. Uh, Tanya says, living, I did check on a passport, but it's expensive. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do to save money on that, except go to a place that takes free passport photos so you don't have to buy them. But that's only, what, 10 bucks maybe the most? Uh, Okay, Tony says, I eat little portions, so I could eat like a child's menu. I don't order regular middle a meal or split it with somebody else if I can get back to regular food. We're going to plan on you being able to get back on regular food. Sharing is always a good idea because of, you know, they put so much stuff in the food these days, so much sodium and stuff that sharing is a good idea for that reason but you know it's going to save you some money you know if you sh if you divide it great you'll have the meal later if you share it great then you're having a meal with a friend and you're both saving money yeah i would love to go with you living but there's too much in the air up in the air right now yeah got it there's always a lot always so, and it, you've got more going on than some. So, all right. A um, couple of other things real quick. And we can do another video on this if you all want to. Um, oh, my gosh. My phone is going down. Okay. So, real quick. Um, talked a little bit about mental health. Um, we didn't really talk too much about managing chronic illness, but we'll get to that. Mobility issues. I saw... What is what bathroom, et cetera? Okay, we're gonna talk about mobility issues right quick. Um, something that helps me to keep my legs better is resistance bands, and these are great because I can bring them on the road. What I found is if my leg starts feeling weak, then I can pop out the resistance band and do some basic like stretches with it, and it really seems to help. Uh, but that's just me, my quirky little body. But when you're talking about mobility issues, you got to do whatever you have to do to be safe. Um, for me, personally, I needed to get a good pair of shoes. Now, I'm very, very fortunate in that with my foot problem, back problem, and having diabetes, the insurance will cover it. So, but that all goes to the deductible. But the thing is, I have to buy shoes anyway. So make sure I get a really super good quality pair of shoes, one that will get, last me for months, to almost a year. That also helps me be more sure-footed. So what I do is, if I'm going to go on a trip, that's when I'm going to get the new shoes. I'm going to get those a couple of weeks ahead of time. I'm going to wear them just enough to break them in. Huge help. So I'm more sure-footed. The other thing is I have my walking stick and they make, oh my gosh, I should have brought it out here. But I forgot. They make walking sticks that are amazing because they unscrew. And so you're not always taking this huge, big, long walking stick. 
because you're taking it and, and it screws down and it's in parts and I can stick it in my suitcase. I can stick it in the back of the van. I love that. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, only I would get excited about a walking stick, but it's really, really cool. So, you know, take the walking stick. Um, if you use a walker, take it, you know, put it in your car. People will help you with it. Like if you go into a hotel and you have a suitcase and you're trying to get it in there and you've got a walker, people will help. Like the desk clerk will help. But if they're usually if there's somebody else standing in the lobby, they'll be like, hey, can I help you with that? And, you know, kind of help you navigate. Um, so that's the mobility thing. Making sure you're not stepping on wet floors, just that awareness really helps. Bingo, been there, done that. Um, the other thing is having somebody with you if you can, and if not, tell the clerk, like when you go to the hotel, go to the front desk and say, hey, just want to let you know, um, I'm not the most sure-footed person. I want to make sure I have an accessible handicapped room. So double check that for me before I check in. And can you tell me when you're likely to be mopping the kitchen floor? Is it before breakfast? Is it during breakfast? Because I want to make sure that I don't slip on it. And could somebody tell me if you do start mopping, can somebody come over and please tell me if you do that? So your your staff at wherever you're staying can be super helpful for mobility. The other thing is to know your limits. If you feel like you need to sit down, find a place to sit down. Walmart is terrible for have, having a place to sit down. But honestly, if you have to go to the bathroom and sit in a toilet stall until you can get where you can walk better, do that. I mean, it's all about you and your safety and your comfort. So, and being upright and mobile is being safe. So, whatever you need to do, they and you can ask, Hey, are there chairs anywhere? You know, you can get one of those motorized scooters when they're available, when the batteries work. But even if you can't get one and you decide to go walking around a store anyway, if they have them then you know where you can go back and sit down for a few minutes. So that's what I would suggest with mobility. The other thing is, you know, you know your limits. Okay, like with me, I know I can't always walk on a gravel road. That's just the way my life is. So then the question becomes, okay, I want to walk on a gravel road. So what do I have to do to do that? Well, I need my dog. Okay, what if I can't use my dog? Well, then I need a walking stick. Then it's, will one walking stick do? Or do I need a walking stick in both hands? And they also make hiking poles. And if you just need balance, they are great to travel with. So a couple of hiking poles might be all you need. And who cares if you need one or six? It's all about you and your safety. So if you need two walking poles, get two walking poles. It's totally fine. So that's kind of what I would suggest for mobility. Also, always have, look at the safety functions on your phone. So with me, it's an Android and it's got, I think every brand has different things. So look, look for your brand. But I have a thing on there where I can hit the start button. I think it's three times. It is three times. And then it will send out an alert to a predetermined person or people that will give them a six second clip and GPS of where I am. And it's supposed to be good to like six feet. So I always want to make sure that I have that charged up. So if I fall, I can hit that. They'll get the alert. They can call me. I can tell them, look, I need help. I don't need help and so forth. Super helpful. So always have that in your pocket. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Go back in here. Do the cost of handicapped facilities at some places, does that make it more expensive? 
I haven't had it make it, I haven't had it be more expensive unless sometimes there has been an upcharge because let's say they have one price for a room with like two double beds and another price for a room with a king size bed. And so I have run into some issues like that when one room type wasn't available and the next handicapped accessible was the next level up. But in general, they, I have not run into where they've just charged more for a handicap room. So I'm not saying it's not out there. I just have never seen it. Um, passports are expensive, Tanya. I got you. Okay. Yep. It's not more expensive in Mexico that I've seen for the handicapped adventures. Yep. I haven't seen it either. Like, but in the in the realm of possibility, I can't completely rule it out. Just that in all my years of working and being in the travel industry, I've not seen it. I want to go to the Harry Potter World and Tomorrowland in Disney so bad. Okay, so they contact them ahead of time. They will tell you all of the ins and outs. Disney World is fabulous for disabilities and accommodating disabilities and they have got one of the things is like you can rent a wheelchair there um, there are places where you can rent a scooter now that does add to the cost but they have them available but through sometimes through third-party vendors but they will also tell you um, all the ins and outs about the rides and the best way to ever the current thing is that they've got going on about whether it's a fast pass or some way to skip or get ahead of the line or a shorter line and then you wait. They're all the time changing those programs, but if you contact them, they are great to give you the information on whatever the current thing is going on. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Yes, okay, medication bottles, absolutely. Bring your prescriptions in the original bottles because one of the things is if you are going through airports, the airports, the TSA doesn't care too much. You can bring them in whatever they're in, but the state that you land in may require it to be in the prescription bottles. Plus, if something was to happen, and you would need like a refill from an unknown pharmacy, you can just hand that prescription bottle over and say, this is what I need. And they can go from there. So what I did when I traveled was I just got a pouch and I put all my prescriptions in it and prescription bottles in it. It was huge. The other thing that I do whenever I go traveling is I'll go to my doctor and ask for her to write out prescriptions that I can take with me, paper copies. I don't care if she writes them, I don't care if she prints them, as long as they're paper. That way, if I'm going to a pharmacy and they can't contact my regular pharmacy, let's say I'm in a small town and the mom and pop pharmacy aren't tied in with like any big computer, I can hand them that paper and I can get that prescription filled. So definitely, those are some things that I always do. and when I go into the doctor, it gives me a chance to talk to the physician and work out a plan, like specifically with my asthma, like managing the chronic illness thing is, you know, work out a plan where if A happens, then what's B? If B happens, then what's C? And so we work out the asthma action plan. That was huge for going to, through British Columbia this summer with all the smoke. And I wound up using what she sent so <laughs> yeah you got to do that sometimes so definitely let's see -da 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 -da. uh tony says i remember gail you told us about a dolphin or whale watching expedition that you went on and you got hurt so you also have to watch what you can or can't do because some people won't be as good and that's true um <laughs> And I, I should have followed my gut instinct on that when I when I first what they did was they switched boats on us and went from a larger boat that was much more stable to a smaller fishing boat. 
And when I saw that doc, my first instinct was to say, no, I'm not doing this. But like a stupid idiot, I didn't. So the dock only had one railing and it was not on the, the side where the water was. It was on the dock side, which meant the whole side was open. The other thing was there was a problem with stepping onto the boat. So that wound up with being a complete disaster. I should have just gone ahead and marched my butt right back in there and told them to give me a refund instead of even trying it. But I saw, I saw it and I thought, okay, I can do that. And what I didn't realize right at first, or I wouldn't have done it, is that in addition to all of that, they had cleaned off the steps. So the steps were all wet. So I should have listened to myself more. So that's now that whole situation is not my fault. That was clearly on them to maintain things properly and to not switch boats because we also found out there were problems with the deck and so on. But yeah, I won't do that again. But I have been on whale watching tours when everything was just fine and there were no problems and they were absolutely great. So I got to tell you, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a crapshoot, but I will definitely, if I ever get to see a situation like that again, where I don't think I'm going to be okay, I'm just going to say, I just, I'll wait here, get me a refund and let whoever go on. Um, but Major, Major Marine out of Seward, Alaska, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I've done tours with them, I guess, three times now, and they have been nice. They have been accommodating. They have been helpful. Um, there's boats at Walt Disney World, and they have been wonderful and accommodating. Uh, my, the paddle wheeler that I was on was wonderful. They were accommodating. So, you know, that's, don't, don't be totally freaked out because of my experience. I think that that was just not the company that the reviews led me to think it was. I'll, I'll just say that. Plus switching out the boat. Hey, Peter Parker's in. Hey, Peter. Good to see you. Okay, my battery's at 13%. That's not good. Or to prove your medication is yours, right, Gail? Yeah, you may have to do that um, at some point. I mean, in theory. And so you're going to have your ID, which your passport is also your ID, um, and the prescription bottles so they can match. So, yeah. Also, make sure that you have a copy of your insurance cards as well as your actual insurance cards. So, what I mean by that is I'll have my insurance cards in my billfold, but I'll have a copy of my insurance cards. For me, it's, it's on the dog. But if it's not on the dog, it'll be like in my suitcase, et cetera. That way, if I get my wallet stolen, I'm covered with another set of cards. Um, it's it's just me being, it's just an extra precaution that I like to do. Uh, also, I put a complete list of everything that I'm allergic to, which is a lot of medications. So I've got that list, my doctor's name, my address, my full name, date of birth on this sheet of paper. So if I have to go to a doctor, I can just hand it to them. You know, so when I'm on the road, it's not as bad because I can usually do telehealth if something comes up. But if I wind up having to go into an emergency department, then I can just hand them that piece of paper with all my medicine written down on it. And I will have, you know, my actual prescription bottles, too, if I'm traveling. So, yeah. Um, mine are prepackaged and have the little label. You're fine. Yep, just bring that container with them. Absolutely. That's okay. You don't have to have bottles as long as they're in the original prescription container that you get them in. So if that's a plastic baggie with a label, you're good. Um, she said, wash her. 
I don't know what he was, what's up with that. Okay. What worries me about traveling without someone from my family who knows how to help me? Sometimes a stranger can make the problem worse trying to help. Um, I worry about flying alone until I get to Florida where I will meet up with living. Flying alone is terrifying. Uh, it can be terrifying, but it can also be a good experience. Like when I went with, oh my gosh, when the baby was born and I had to fly by myself suddenly and unexpectedly, people were phenomenal. I, I just, I could not have asked for better. Delta Airlines, huge, major, big shout out to Delta Airlines because they made this super stressful situation much easier. So if you are nervous about flying and you're going to fly by yourself, tell the airline attendant, hey, I'm not used to flying. I'm flying by my, myself. I may need some help. If you think you may have bathroom issues, then try to get a seat next to a bathroom when you book your ticket. And if that means you book online and then you call the airlines, you know, do that um, because you're going to be sitting in the back of the air, airplane, but that's okay because the bathroom may be right there. And for some people, that is a big deal. Um, also, if you bathrooms in there are really, really tight, so there's not a whole lot of room to necessarily move around that much extra, which for me is a good thing because I didn't have that much space to fall. So, um, and, and the airline attendants, oh my gosh, when I went with my daughter, for my daughter and grandbaby, they were phenomenal. Like they even, they have pre-boarding if you have a disability. So you're going to be the first to board um, and they'll, they'll board you with like the, all the, the points people and whatnot and then, and, and board you and then they'll help you and they'll just like, they'll help you put your things in the rack. If you've got things that have to go up above, there are people that will help you check your stuff in on the flight. If you tell them you're nervous, they'll, they'll check in with you on the flight. Um, they can just, th those are, the flight attendants are basically your, your, best friend slash parent while you're in the air and we can talk about that um, so yeah okay all right my phone is like the battery is is like really at 80 percent here so i hope some of this has been helpful we didn't quite cover everything that i had written down um, but we can do this. Do y'all want to talk about this some next week too? <coughs> Is that something you'd be interested in? Uh, Peter, good night. Thank you for coming in. Uh, so, it, is this something that you'd be interested in talking about again next week or no? Tanya says, sure. Okay. Well, then we'll we'll go into more on on this you know, next week too, because I want the streams to be helpful for y'all. Okay. So thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciated it. Um, go ahead, give me a like on the live stream. Don't forget to do that. And I will see you Saturday then at 730. I'd love to go into this more deeply next week, part two. That's what we'll do. So plan on it right here, 730 next week. And I will talk to you then. You all take care. Always hashtag be bodacious. Don't let life get in the way of living. Okay. Take care. Good night, everyone.